and welcome to another edition of History in the Dark. Based off of the hits I've been getting, alright, alright, a lot of people seem to like trades. Oh, good. Alright, well that's fine, it's a good topic for me. I like trades, I'm not just gonna keep talking about trains forever, of course, if people want something else, by all means let me know. But, if a lot of people want more trains, then I'm gonna keep talking about trains. And then I thought to myself, alright, well what about the what, what train videos are getting hit? Oh, it's the ones where the trains are under the water. Oh, goody, more, more sunken trains. And I assure you, there are more sunken trains I can talk about. Two in particular I would love to talk about, but then I thought to myself, well, I don't want to do that immediately. I don't want to run that well dry, so to speak. You know, that, 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 that's getting a bit more creative. What about, what about trains underground? Underwater, okay, we can, we can buy that. I mean, you know, train falls off a boat or off a bridge or, uh, you know, whatever it may be. Train, I, I, we can see that. But underground? Why would you bury a train? Why, you know, what logistics led to that? Well, there's more than one example. But the one we're going to talk about today involves New Zealand. Specifically, the New Zealand V-Class steam locomotives. The V-Class were, well, not the greatest locomotives ever built, in fairness. They had their perks, but only 13 were built. The reason for this is that when they were initially constructed and delivered to the... New Zealand government railways that they initially ordered them, the NZGR didn't accept them because they were overweight by about five and a half tons. So it wasn't exactly like a minor detail with the weight. It was like a substantial increase compared to what they had paid for. So the locomotives were sent back for remodeling to try to bring the weight down. And by the time they got done with that, they had already been superseded by the N-Class, which were American built. All that said, the V-Class were used on the New Zealand Railway. The Wellington and Manawatu Railway Company did order three of them and did use them. These ones were a bit more modified and they could be fired with any light fuel in general, which was pretty impressive at the time. They were more flexible. While they weren't super powerful or anything, the fact that they could get away with using basically most fuel that was available in New Zealand at the time made them incredibly useful on the railways. But there was a major flaw with the V-Class in particular, and that had to do with the frames. There was a structural weakness in all of them. The weak spot, when it was stressed, it would break. And it basically made them impossible to be rebuilt. Like, there was no fixing it. Once the frame was done, it's... You ever get in a car accident? Uh, oh, sorry, are you okay? Please don't get in a car accident, that's bad. But you ever hear about a car accident? And, you know, when the insurance does the adjusting, they find that the frame has been dealt, dented in any way. Once a frame on any kind of vehicle has been altered extremely, it's very difficult to reconstruct. It's just one of those things. At that point, you might as well replace the whole thing, because to rebuild the frame, you'd basically be rebuilding the vehicle. And trains are no different. Once a frame is gone, it's gone. Just just buy a new train. That being said, this issue didn't actually crop up, as far as I've been able to tell, during the engine's life. It, it never was in a situation where this resulted in the train being retired. It actually only cropped up when the trains were retired. And now we're leading into how the V-Class wound up underground, of all places. So, the V-Class was retired post-World War I. The economic situation at the time was that suddenly, scrap metal was worthless. There was such a surplus of the stuff because, you know, it was a war. There was a lot of stuff that were just scrapped because there was a lot of metal that was used during the war that no longer had a purpose. So scrap metal wasn't worth a whole heck of a lot. Like, you could you could scrap it, but, but for what? It, it literally cost more to move the train to the scrapyard than they'd get paid to scrap it. So it was a really weird situation. Normally trains are scrapped when they're done, unless they're held for preservation. But because of the war surplus of scrap metal, they just didn't have a reason to scrap them. So what did they do with the V-Class? <laughs> well, this is where we get into questionable decisions, and from an environmental perspective that I will not comment on at this time, but wow. Okay, so here's what they did. New Zealand has a system of rivers, obviously, like most places, and they experience flooding at times. So in order to help prevent this, the railway decided, hey, 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 I got an idea. Why don't we just dump the engines in the river and they could be used as an unnatural flood barrier. Yes, really. That's what they did. I, 
I mean, by modern environmental protection standards, I don't think that's gonna fly. But this was the early 20th century, and back then they were just like, whatever, just, just throw it in the water. What could possibly go wrong? Well, in fairness, nothing actually did go wrong in my knowledge. So there was that. Uh, you know, but you know, it didn't really do anything. But it did cause, over time, the engines to be lost. For the most part, I mean, they were first under the water, but then they wound up buried as the rivers flowed, as sediment built up, as the mud, you know, moved. Eventually, the engines were simply under the ground. They, they, they were just gone, like, like for all intents and purposes. And because they were just getting rid of them, nobody really kept track of where they had put them at all past the point of just dropping them there. They were just, they were just, they were just, they were just dumped. That, that's, 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 that's where the V classes ended up for the most part. Uh, actually, as far as my research, they all were dumped in various places. So I suppose you're wondering now, well, has anyone tried to find them? And the answer is yes! There are a few cases of people finding the V-Classes and bringing them back up into the light of day! The earliest example of this was actually in 1999, an enthusiast by the name of Tony Batchelor managed to salvage the remains of the V-Classes V-35, V-125, and V-136. Due to the weaknesses in the frames, however, 132 suffered some issues when it was brought back up. And originally, Tony wanted to restore all of the engines, but the deal that he made with the trust fund fell through, and Tony Bachelor moved the remnants to his property in Ashurst. Whether or not he plans to do anything with them, that's up to him, I guess, at this point. They're, they're kind of his, but yeah, yeah that's, that's where those ended up. That's not quite as exciting as a story. The story I do want to tell you actually happened just last year, January 2020. The Lumsden Heritage Trust actually successfully recovered two of the V-Classes from a dump site in the Oreti River. And by in the river, I mean under the sediment that the river put out of them. They weren't even really under the water. It was just, just, it was in the friggin' ground. I, it's just one of those things. But anyway, this project took six years of planning. And I think it kind of shows how difficult it can be to recover things as large as steam engines. I've gotten comments from people, you know, of people, you know, really wanting those engines, you know, that are under the lakes, uh, brought back up to the surface, and that, again, that's really sweet, but like I said before, this is not, is not a feasible or cheap thing to do. The reason why the Loomsden Heritage Trust was so interested in the V-Class is that there aren't that many examples of them. V-Class 126 and 127 were both stuck under the mud. The first day of the project, they managed to get 127 out. They wanted to do both, but the owner of the land was being difficult in terms of how long they were going to be there. So logistics just didn't work with them by their own admission. It was such a massive effort to bring 127 out of the dirt to begin with, let alone getting 126 out. However, they did get back to 126 later in the year and salvaged both of them. The engines, miraculously, are in remarkably good shape considering... Well, yeah. They are missing some components, but, I mean, looking at them, you can tell they're steam engines. They're intact. The project actually garnered international attention, probably because anyone hears, uh, we pulled a steam engine out of the freaking ground and people come running to see it. It's also worth mentioning that the 127 and 126 are in much better condition than the ones that Tony Batchelor got a hold of. V35, 125, and 136, as well as 132, aren't really in great shape. They're basically in pieces, but 126 and 127 are together. And it's been entertained that they could possibly restore them to a certain degree. My personal opinion on that, well, now that you have them up, yeah. That's a reasonable course of action, but I can't imagine either of these coming to the point of running under steam power again. Restoring to that point would cost a tremendous amount of money, if it's possible at all, just from safety concerns. Though I would love to see them restored to a point for static display, if they just look the part again. You know, paint them in their old library, you know, get the rust off of them, just make them look nice, because right now they're sitting outside, and though the displays are interesting, and I would love to go see them myself one day, I would also like to see at least one of the engines restored to a degree that it looks the way it did when it actually ran on the rails for static display, of course. Again, running under steam power, I would also adore that personally, but it's just not reasonable to expect them to do that. Not with the condition they're in. Yeah, they're intact, but you have to consider running under steam pressure 
is not something you want to put a rusty boiler into doing. It, it, it's just not safe. You could restore them to a degree, but it, you know, at, at what point do you stop and say, boy, boy howdy, um, we're just replacing every component of this train to make it safe to the point that it's not even the engine anymore. It's one of those situations, in my mind. I mean, I haven't looked at them myself. I'm not I'm not necessarily an expert on reconstructing old steam engines. I know what I know, but I can't do it myself, certainly not. So I'm not really the person to be talking about that in any great detail. But what I am saying is I would not expect these engines to ever truly run again, but I would be happy to see them restored to a eye-catching, livery, you know, classical look appropriate state to make them pretty again. We like pretty things. Why not? Apparently they were very colorful back when they when they, when they were actually used and the rest not doing it for us. That's that, that's that's to make them colorful. Let's make them look good. Let's make you know, I think they deserve it. They were stuck onto the freaking ground. You literally necromance these trains out of the earth. You make them look less like zombies. That's all I'm saying. Okay. All right. I'm getting off track again. This was a fun story. Let me know if you guys want me to talk about anything else in this field. Uh, I still have those other trains that are under the water. Uh, we, can, we can talk about those. Or I can shift gears into something else. Planes. Automobiles. Boats. War history. I don't You know, whatever. It's whatever. It's, we, 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 we do history here. We do facts. You want to hear facts? I'll give you facts. Till next time. This is Darkness for History in the Dark. And I bid you all a fond farewell.